Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies, and today what I've, what I've done is I've fitted the Next 33, which is the 2020 PSE hunting bow, with a target set up to see how well I shoot at 18 meters. Now, a lot of I get a lot of questions about people saying, "Well, how's a hunting bow going to shoot for target? Shall I use it for 3D? What bow should I shoot for 3D? Should I be shooting the target bow for 3D?" And when I did the review on the Next 33, I shot really well with it. So I thought what I'll do today is I'll fit some stabilizers to it, a target sight, a blade rest um, to it, and see how this thing shoots. Now what's unique about the Next 33 is the stabilizer positions, they're very low. So that creates more of a, they call it a pendulum, so basically to create more stability. Now what's different about the Next 33 to the target bows in the PSE lineup? So something like the Supra, or the, or the Supra XL. Now the first thing is the cams, they're different sizes. So the Supra um, XL EM is a smaller cam, and then you go up to the Supra XL, which is the same cam as the Supra, which is slightly bigger. The Next 33 is bigger again. Now this bow is fitted with 90% let off and a lot of the Supras will be fitted with 65% so you have more valley back here. This bow is 33 inches axle axle and it shoots at 320, this is why I have the tag, 322 feet per second. Now the Supra I know shoots 327 because I still have the tag on my bow. So the Supra itself, even though it's a target bow, is 5 feet per second faster than this. It has a half an inch longer brace height. This is a 7 inch brace height. So basically, theoretically, this draw should be smoother than the Supra. It should be an easier draw and a bigger valley. And it's 90%. So when I get it back there at holding weight, I'm actually going to be only holding like six pounds. Okay, so I want to quickly discuss a quick a bit about this bow. You've got a twin cam set up here, so the top cam and bottom cam are identical. So you want your D loop in the center of the bow, which is through the center of the plunger button. If you move it higher or lower, then you'll get one wheel advancing over the bottom wheel. Um, the biggest thing I've found in improving the accuracy is stabilizers. That being the longer and the more weight you have, the harder it is for you to move. Now I've got too much weight on here for myself because I haven't been shooting much lately. And this will fatigue my body and create poor technique. So really I should take some of these weights off and build myself back up. But we're going to just shoot this, just see how it goes. Now should I shoot a V-bar or a single bar? That's personal preference. I've found no difference at all to my scores with a V-bar versus a single bar. Um, I wish there was a difference. I. Blade rest, I don't know if it's going to give you a lot. Um, a sight itself, now the expensive targets, sights like this here, what this gives you is dependability and micro adjustment. With the cheaper target sights, they can come loose, the little nuts can come loose. They can just be a bit of a pain. As you spend more money, it becomes more dependable. The scope itself here, I've got a shrewd scope, and it's got a decent quality lens. I've found very little difference with scopes. Um, and even with clarity, like if I put a peep sight in with a clarifier, that reduces the power of the scope. I found very little difference with my scores if the scope is focused or not focused. So I've got a six times fitted here. Um, so it actually looks bigger than I normally shoot with my target set up because I have a clarifier in there. So this, this target's gonna look a lot bigger. Now I fitted no um, peep sight to this because ideally I would in my target setup. I would fit a peep sight and I'd line up the peep sight with the front sight but I don't think it's going to create much difference in my shootability with this. Um, now other things I'd probably try with this bow for targets shooting and for 3D I'd probably try the lower let off, percent, lower let off um, modules um, and I would try it with and without the grip which you can take off. Um, for this purpose I'm just going to shoot it with the grip. Um, because I'm interested to see how well I shoot. Now, I'm going to say today is a really blistering hot day. It's 40 degrees and I shot this morning and I buggered this shoulder. Um, actually pulling the arrows out of the target. It really hurts. So, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Now, this is 90% let off. I've wound the bow down from 60 to probably 56 to make it easier to pull back. So it doesn't hurt my shoulder less. 
Now arrows are really important to get yourself a decent quality set of arrows. They don't need to cost a fortune. Um, I'm just shooting the Victory VAPs. And yes, I've tried other arrows and they shoot fine. I've just got a whole pile of these, so I'm just using them. These arrows are, I think, over two years old now. Um, so the rest is about $40. So let's kind of see how well I shoot. Now I get asked questions all the time about release aids. Which release aid should I shoot? Should I shoot back tension? Should I shoot thumb? Should I shoot wrist? I'm gonna say there's very little difference in release aids. It's more about mental and I'm shooting a back tension here so it's a hinge to set it off. Sometimes hinges are good and really good for training because you're not thinking about punching the button. You're thinking about just the shot technique. If it's windy then it's probably better to shoot a button because um, sometimes it's really hard to get the shot off. Um, but I find this is really good for just focusing on aiming. Now what I'm going to say is there's a big thing, there's a big thing, lots of people are asking you know what equipment should I buy, what should I do and the biggest thing is practice. The more you practice the better you're going to shoot, the stronger you're going to become, the steadier you're going to become, the less you're going to fatigue, um, the more cons consistent you're going to be, the mentally I find if my mind's wandering around the place, so I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about that, I'm not going to shoot very well. I need to be completely focused on what I'm doing um, and producing the same shot over and over again. Now there's a fair bit, when I say there's a fair bit of wind, I was actually moving around a fair bit then, I probably should have let down, I don't know where the arrow went. I should, probably should have let down because my sight pin was moving between the gold and the eight. Um, I actually moved out to the right of the eight. Um, you've got so many seconds to get the shot off before you start to fatigue and you've basically lost all your oxygen. So. So timing is really important. Um, like for me, my lung capacity is not as good as it should be. Um, whether you say that's because of asthma or I'm not doing enough cardio, cardio will improve your lung capacity. Um, <coughs> but for me, this review is more about, can I shoot this bow for target? How well I would shoot it? How it compares to, the, to bows like the Supra? Now that, I don't know if you could see it on the video, but I was getting a lot of wobble through there. And that's the weight of the bow. Basically, I'm having trouble after a few seconds with the weight of the bow because of the weights on the stabilizer. Um, so I should really reduce my weight. Um, I have been okay with the weight. Um, literally up till today, I was fine. <laughs> it was just shitting in today's weather. It just, I really struggled. And there's a bit of wind around, so... Now 
Now that's going to get me to the question about 90% let off versus 60% let off. There's a whole bunch of shooters who prefer one, like 90, and there's a whole bunch of shooters who prefer 60. And people have won with both. Um, my personal view is, um, I find the 60% let off better in the wind. I find it creates a better release. Um, my hand comes back better, it creates better technique. However, 90% let off and higher percent let offs, if you don't have the strength, are easy to shoot because you're not fatiguing. Um, so, but I find I get better technique with less let off. And back in the old days, back in the old days when people used to have round wall bows, they used to come 60% and 50%. A lot of people would shoot 50% 50% let off. Now, I'm finding this bow very easy to shoot. The draw cycle, today when I was shooting, I was basically struggling pulling the bow back. My arrow was coming off the rest about half the time, even though I had the bite rest on it. So you could say, well, you should wind down your bow. Actually, I was, I was pulling the arrows out up high and that was just killing the shoulder here. Um, it's, yeah, wasn't good. Um, But yes, I should have wound the bow down, but I didn't have my allen keys. So, with the focus, it slightly jumps forward when you shoot the bow. This bow is completely dead in your hand, so there's absolutely nothing. It's much quieter than the Focus to shoot. Um, I'm not noticing the difference between the 33 inch and the 40 inch, which affects the angle, um, which is where the string runs down your face. <coughs> the 40 inch would obviously have a bigger angle than the 33 inch, being shorter. But this is a 7 inch brace height, I'm finding it very easy to aim. Um, the stabilizers down low I like, um, seems to be really balanced, um, Sorry. <coughs> I feel like I'm having trouble getting the shot off, um, which I felt today when I shot the competition. Um, like my score was all right. I just felt like I was shooting not very well. Um, so, So I had one of those days where I was actually on a couple of points off what I, you know, off, off my best score, but I just felt, it just felt terrible the whole day. I was like shaking around and the arrows were just landing in the middle most of the time. And I was like, So there is a bit of wind around. I'm, my sight pin's moving between the 10 and the nine with the wind. Um, but I'm finding this just as easy, maybe easier to shoot than the Focus. And I found I was getting my best results with the Focus. I'm gonna say the difference between the different bows I shoot, I've got a Focus, I've got a Focus XL, I've got a Perform, I've got lots of bows. My difference in scores between the different bows is literally one or two points. And when I shoot hundreds and hundreds of shots and record them all for rounds, they're almost the same. Um, in fact, I've got a guy who shoots another club. He's got a hunting bow, like a drive, a PSE drive. He's got a PSE focus for a target bow. He has a stealth, a PSE stealth, which is sort of a you know, lightweight carbon bow. 
he shoots almost the same scores with all three bows and ones with hunting sights um, and I'm talking high out of 300s high 290s um, and basically yeah, the same sort of scores with all bows We'll just shoot one more and we'll go down and see where they are. I was really struggling with that shot, I don't know where it went. I felt like this arm was rising up here, the elbow. I was struggling with the weight of the bow, with the weight of the stabilizers I put on. Um, and this shoulder is killing me. So, so all up, my feeling without going down there and seeing where those arrows are, I feel like I could shoot a good score with this bow. Um, I feel the bow's quieter, less vibration than the Supra. So when it comes to what bow would I choose for 3D, I think it gets back to if you want a hunting bow. If you want a hunting bow, something like the 33 or the 35 is ideal. It's quiet, it's no vibration, it's easy to shoot. You can swap the modules from 60 to 70, 60, 70%, 90%. I think you've got fast modules, so you can change the feel of the bow. Um, so I think for target, you can shoot a decent school with this bow. And I mean compete against anyone with any bow on the shooting line. I don't really have a... I don't think it's going to be a de detriment to you, to your scores. Um, if you're mainly a target shooter, as far as, look, I'm going to shoot 3D, I'm going to shoot uh, mainly shooting spots, I'm not going to hunt, then I would raise the question whether the target bow would be better for you from the fact that it may be better as far as accuracy compared to the 33 because it's got a bigger brace height, bigger axle axle. Um, but once again, it gets to how much you shoot. Um, if you're shooting not a lot, you may find the 33 or the 35 easier to shoot because of that high let off, because there's no vibration when you shoot the bow. Um, but I'm going to say it's very hard when choosing a bow, even just in that one manufacturer. If you're going to buy a PSE, you've got all these bows to choose from. You know, you've got the Supra, your Super XL, you've got the Supra XL Long Draw, you've got the Forms, you've got the Next 35s, you've got the Next 33. Which bow am I going to choose? And then it becomes even harder when you add all the other brands into it. I'm going to say there's very little difference. So your best bets to get go and try them and see which one you prefer and let's go down there and sort of see where these arrows landed so I can get a feel for how I shot. So I'm up here at the target, you can see my group besides that 1.8, there's 1.9. Um, the group's pretty, like pretty good. I'm gonna say I'm, I shot better with that than I would with the Focus. Um, my scores with the Focus um, in the past week have varied anywhere from a 297 out of 300 down to a 292, 293, probably averaging around 295. That This group is clearly that, um, probably better than the Focus. Um, and my shoulder's absolutely not great. Um, I don't have a peep sight in the string, um, which would help because the string gets in the vision of the scope. Um, but it's not going to give me a lot, which is what I thought before I did this video. I was sort of toyed up, should I put a peep sight in or shouldn't, shouldn't I? So, just based on that, that's 18 meters. Um, that's a pretty tight group. A lot of those arrows are really tight. Um, so yeah, so I think that kind of gets to where I wanted it to get to. Um, and basically I didn't 
this is you can see it's a clean target before I started so it wasn't like shoot 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 before I filmed this um, basically I shot six arrows before sighting this bow as I normally do in my videos sighted the bow in changed the scope to the left um, got the height right which was about six arrows um, but that's a good group um, so I think the things I want to take from this group from this video is weight on your stabilizer don't put more weight on than you need um, if you can't if you're struggling to hold it I was definitely struggling to hold it and there was a bit of wind around so today it's not ideal it's very very hot um, I reduced the weight of this of the draw cycle because of my shoulder I'm down to about 56 I'm guessing for that um, but I shot really really well and that's the next 33 from PSE um, I hope that's been helpful for you um, the more you shoot the better you shoot there's just no there's no alternative um, than shooting arrows if you're going to shoot more arrows than the person next to you you're probably going to be a better shot than the person next to you I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies I hope that's been helpful thanks for watching bye